praise the name of Jesus. You may be seated if you if you want to. And if you can. Isaiah chapter 55. And also Matthew chapter 5. So I might start with Matthew chapter 5. Verse 6. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and those who thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. And then Isaiah 55 says, verse 1, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Verse 2. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me and your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander of the peoples. Surely, you will not summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, has endowed you with splendor. Amen. Seek the Lord. <laughs> While he may be found, call on him while he is near. So I'm just going to share something short with us this morning. Last Sunday, we talked about the sonship. We talked about how in between the father and the son is a flow. Praise the name of Jesus. And we reached the baptism of Jesus. Yeah, If you remember, yes? We reached where the heavens opened and the father spoke and said, this is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased with him. And if you follow the story, the next thing that happens is the Bible says, and Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit of God. Amen? The heavens have opened. The veil has been removed. The father has spoken. The son has heard. Even all the other people around have heard. And then immediately after, Jesus is sent to the wilderness. Not by the devil. Praise the name of Jesus. He is sent to the wilderness led by the Spirit of God. Amen? And then in the wilderness, something happens. In the desert now, Satan meets him there. In the wilderness, the tempter comes. And he tells him, and you know Jesus now is fasting. He has been fasting for 40 days. I'm not sure why this is bothering me in, the, in my spirit this morning. But could we all just come closer so that we're not sitting so far behind May I request that of you? If you're sitting far behind, please come closer. It will be lovely. Just come close. Asante ni sana. Even those who are behind, kina manu, karibieni, songe ni mbele. So Jesus is sent to the wilderness. And then he is fasting and then the devil comes to him and tells him, since you're so hungry, you see these stones, they can become bread. Why don't you turn them to become bread? Hmm? <laughs> you're so hungry, Jesus. And you know you're the son of God. You're not the son of any ordinary man. You are the son of almighty God. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Huh? Even yesterday, the father spoke and told you you are his son. He is pleased with you. So even if you turn these stones to bread, the father is still your father and he is still pleased with you and he will still love you. Uh-huh. Now put yourself in that situation. What would you do? Today I'm being, I'm just sharing it's a heart-to-heart -heart talk. If you are in that situation, you have been fasting 40 days. How many have fasted 40 days? Even me, I haven't fasted 40 days. So imagine, you have fasted 40 days. Hakuna chips muitu. Ujapitia mali ukakula kitu. In fact, you're in the wilderness. There are no shops. There's no hope of food. And now, the tempter has come to you and said, but you are the son of God. How can you be dying of hunger? Hmm? How can you be hungry and thirsty when all these stones, you know, imagine a wilderness is full of stones. All these stones are here for you. Just pick two. Mimi mutu wa mukate ningechukua kama tano hivi. Nisiambie, my father said he is pleased. And I turned them to bread there and there. Was this a strange thing? Was it strange for God to provide bread in the wilderness? If you are a student of the Bible, is there somewhere else where you remember bread came in the wilderness? Mnakumbuka? There's somewhere else, yeah? When the children of Israel were in that same wilderness, in the desert, and they were looking for food. There was no food now. They were not in Egypt where they used to know where they can get food from. Now they're in a desert. And then the Lord provided something called manna. And the meaning of manna is, what is this? That's what they said when they saw it. They said, what is this? And it fell every day except the Sabbath day. And in essence, God provided bread in the wilderness. So for God, the, the enemy to be telling Jesus, just these stones. Manna may not come. But there are enough stones here. Why don't you just make them bread? Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> if you're looking for a title, I, I have a tendency you're giving your title midway through. <laughs> right? Stones are not bread. And tell your neighbor also. Stones are not Matthew chapter 4. The tempter, verse 3, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Man does not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from the mouth of God. And this one, Jesus is not answering his own words. He's referencing the scripture again to the enemy and telling him, it is written in the year of overflow, man shall not live by bread alone. The overflow shall not come by bread alone. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. I me say it again. In the year of overflow, it shall not come by bread alone. I want us to lift our eyes today. To stop looking here at the stones. Stop hoping and expecting that they can become something for us to eat. The overflow shall not come by bread alone. Praise the name of Jesus. The overflow shall not come, shall not come by bread alone, but by the word of God that comes from the mouth of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Huh. You see, the problem was sonship. The problem was understanding sonship. The problem was the veil I talked about last Sunday. When there is a veil between father and sons, stones look like bread. Praise the name of Jesus. I find it very interesting how Lenaz led us this morning in prayer. She has read Matthew chapter 7, which says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks, receives, and knocks, is opened for, and seeks, finds. And then Jesus continued to say, How many of you, being good fathers, 
or being earthly fathers, when your children ask you for bread, how many give them stones? I find it interesting how always there's a comparison between bread and stones. Even Jesus is asking them, even you when your children ask you for bread, do you give them stones? When they ask you for fish, do you give them serpents? When they ask you for provision, do you give them something else which is not what they asked for? Why? Because of sonship. You understand, there's no veil between the father and the son. So when the son is asking for bread, the father says, ah, yeah. What have we read in Isaiah 55? Come, come and eat. Come and buy without money. Sonship eats without money. Praise the name of Jesus. When the veil is removed, last two weeks ago, Bishop mentioned a verse to me and I found it completely interesting because I had never thought of it in that, that way. The, the scripture says, bring to the storehouse. Bring to the house of God so that there can be food in the house of God. Uh -huh. So you bring from your house. You bring to the house of God. Today I feel the Lord wants to heal something. There's a wound of this ministry and there's a wound of your life somewhere. Praise the name of Jesus. There's a wound somewhere. A festering wound. Kuna kidonda. Bring to the house of God that there might be food where? In the house of God. That scripture has not asked you whether you have food in your house. It has not checked with you first. Do you have enough in your house before you bring something to the house of God? Huh? Elijah walked in such a kind of anointing. He met the widow and said, give me to eat. He has not asked. The, it is in the middle of famine. It is a wilderness. Praise the name of Jesus. It is a dry, dry, dry time. And Elijah is saying, give me to eat. He doesn't know that this very last thing is the only thing this widow has. <laughs> Overflow shall not come by bread alone. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Overflow shall not come by bread alone. Praise the name of the Lord. So when the Lord is saying, bring to the house of God, there is no one who has come to check. No angel has been sent to your house to do the stock for you. But the instruction stands. Bring to the house of God. Bring to the storehouse. That there might be food. Where? In the house of God. In the house of who? The house of your father. If there is food in the house of your father and you are a son and there is no veil between the father and the son, don't you have food also? Isn't there overflow in your house also? Is it possible to bring to the house of God and your house remain empty? Answer me. I'm, I'm not asking a rhetorical question. Is it possible to bring something to the house of your father and then to go and die of hunger out there. Is it possible? If that is your father, and there is no veil. Last week, I'm not, today I'm not talking about the veil. I'm talking about the stones and the bread. The veil has been removed. Ah, there is beautiful communion between father and son. And then the father tells the son, bring to my house. <laughs> bring to my house. Bring to the house of the father. Why has it been so hard for us to bring to the house of the Father eternity? We know ourselves. It has been hard. I know we are giving in the marathon. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the one you bring to the house of your Father secretly, quietly. You don't announce it because it's between you and your Father. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Now, if there is food in the storehouse of your father, there is also food in the storehouse of the son. The son cannot be hungry when there is food in the storehouse of the father. Praise the name of Jesus. Overflow shall not come by bread alone. So, now let us imagine the situation. If the veil had not been removed, and father and son are not communing well together, there is no communion between the fathers and the sons. There is no understanding. There is no revelation between fatherhood and sons. 
When the sons go into the wilderness, not led by the devil, led by the Spirit of God. Because you know what? The wilderness is a place of measuring sonship. Sonship is measured in the wilderness. Praise the name of Jesus. So when the Spirit of God leads Jesus to the wilderness, if he was not seeing the Father, if he was not having a communion with the Father, and now he is hungry, and he is thirsty, and the devil has told him these are plenty of stones. Pick any, turn them to bread, and eat. What would Jesus have done? What would I have done? What would you have done? If there exists a veil between you and the Father, you'd have said, hey, this idea. let me help myself to some of these stones. Because I might go to the house of my father and he might not give me anything. I might go there and find nothing for me. So you know what? Let me turn some little stones. Let me make some bread for myself. Anyway, my father told me he's pleased. <laughs> he's happy. Whatever I do, he has already allowed me to do. Anyway, so let me turn some stones to bread. Nichi's idea kwa sasa. kuimba pambio. Na kushikuru mungu. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. When there is a veil between fathers and sons, sons resort to stones. Stones begin looking like bread to us. We know the story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. A father and a son. Because he was one who carried after Elijah. He's a son who carries after the father. And even if you read in scripture when Elijah was taken, Elijah cries out and says, my father, my father. Amen? So Elijah was fathering Elisha. <laughs> and the day Elijah was being taken, all the people came to him. What were they telling him? Don't you know that your master is going to be taken from you today? Are you not aware? All the prophets came to him. All the voices came to him to tell him, Today, Elisha, you've not been told? Are you not aware? Even your master, has he not told you? Is there such a veil between the two of you that you don't know that today your master is going? Your father is going. Now, you're going to be left an orphan. You're going to be left with nothing, Elisha. Elisha, these stones. So you turn them to bread before the master goes. Get something from this ministry of this man before he goes. You have served him so well over the years. The Bible says, Elisha who poured water over the hands of Elijah. He served him with one heart. Huh? The day Elijah went to call Elisha. <laughs> Elisha was plowing the oxen. And Elijah came and put his mantle on top of him. And Elisha understood what that meant. And he said, let me bid bye to my father and mother and the brothers and sisters and come and follow you. And then Elijah asked him, but what have I done to you? <laughs> what have I, I have not done nothing. But Elisha understood by the spirit that, ah, I've been fathered. The veil has been removed. The veil has been removed. Now my father has seen me. I've seen him. I've recognized him. I'm going to leave even my other fathers. I'm going to leave every inheritance and go after this man. Then follow him and serve him and be a son under him. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, after faithfully, dutifully serving Elijah all those years, <laughs> the prophets come to him and tell him, Sasa, Kimeumana. <laughs> this was Elisha's wilderness. <laughs> and if you read the story, they walked with Elijah from Gilgal to Jericho, to where, to where, to the Jordan, Wakitambea to every opportunity is there for Elijah to sit Elisha down and tell him something. Hmm? <laughs> so the, the company of prophets have come to him and told him, Unaachwa, wewe, Jichungi, Utaachwa hivyo, bila baba, bila kitu. You know, Elisha left his inheritance. If Elijah did not give Elisha anything and just left, what would have happened to Elisha? He left his home, he left his people, he left his inheritance, he left everything, he left his career, 
He has no career. He has no bank account. He left everything because the father came and put a, a, a mantle on him and said, Twende. Praise the name of Jesus. And then now, Elijah is going. Even the prophets, they know Elijah today. Today he is going. But Elijah has not told Elisha. Now, not him there too now. And then Elisha, finally, at some point, you know, I have one request. What is your request? Give me. You see, Leonard read for us, ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door shall be opened. There's no one who knocks, a son who knocks on the door of their father and it is not opened. So Elisha is knocking, saying, by the way, give me a double portion of your spirit. <laughs> and Elijah tells him, you have asked me a difficult thing. But if you see me go, if you see me go, if you are with me to the very end, if in no place do you abandon me, yeah, man, you're not town. Praise the name of Jesus. If you're with me, if you walk with me, this son, if you go with me to the end, hmm, overflow shall not come by bread alone. So Elijah follows, even with the company of the prophets telling him, what were they telling him? Help yourself. Turn some stones. Take some assets of the ministry of Elijah. If Elijah was a preacher today, he would perhaps own land. He was a big prophet, you know. He would own assets. He would own many, many things. Elijah would be a wealthy man. Like Abraham. But he was a, a rough and rugged prophet. If he was a preacher today, he would have a TV channel. He would have branches of his ministry somewhere. He would have things. So the prophets are telling him, before this man goes, take some stones. Even if he has not given you something, if he has not given you bread, take some stones at the very least. Turn, turn them to bread. As you watch, if you praise the name of Jesus. But I hear Elisha answering them like Jesus. It is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. I will not live by the words that the company of prophets is saying. I will live by the word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And now I summarize that story. We know the story. Elijah went. The mantle touched the fire. It came down. Elisha took it and went to the Jordan and said, if, the, if I have anything, let me see the God of my father. And he did like his father. And the waters parted the same way they used to part for his father. And, his, and the people now looked and said, surely, surely, the spirit of Elijah now rests on Elisha. Elisha was not carrying stones. He had done Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 says, come and buy. Why do you eat what is not bread? Mm. Why are you eating what is not bread? Because you have not understood how to be a son. When you are not a son, you eat that. Come 
Until one time there was a servant that came. A king actually, a ruler, called Naaman. He had heard, he had heard of Elisha. He was a man with leprosy. And now he got to hear from his servant girl that there is a prophet somewhere in Israel who can solve your problem, who can deal with your leprosy. You just need to go see him, he will help you out. And so Naaman prepares himself. He comes with gifts, all kinds of gifts. Praise the name of Jesus. Gifts of clothes, of gold, talent of silver. He has come with gifts because he's expecting if there is any man who can solve my leprosy, if there is anyone who can cure me of my leprosy, mm, I don't know, I don't have enough to give them, to thank them for helping me because this leprosy is a shame as a ruler, it's a shame to me. So Naaman prepares himself, goes all the way to meet Elisha. Elisha, Elisha, man shall not live by bread alone. Elisha is eating overflow inside his bedroom. Praise the name of Jesus. Elisha is abundant inside his room. <laughs> Elisha doesn't even come outside to see Naaman, <laughs> who has come, a king, a ruler. He has come to see the man of God. But the overflow, you know, overflow can make you look arrogant when you are not. You are not. You are not arrogant. You are just simply eating the bread. Praise the name of Jesus. You are simply eating that which satisfies. The Bible says you desire to purchase. Come and eat and delight yourself in the richest of fairs. So Elisha is delighting himself in the richest of fairs. He is busy delighting himself in the Lord. And the king comes and knocks. He says, now I've come to see you because I've heard that you can solve my leprosy. And then Elisha, who is delighting his soul in the richest of the, of the good things of God, praise the name of Jesus, he doesn't come out to see it now. He sends the he says, go tell him to go to the Jordan, dip himself there seven times, and his skin will be fine. He will be healed. He just needs to go there, do what I've told him to do, and go home. We know the story. Naaman protests because Jordan, what kind of river is Jordan? What kind of place is Jordan? Mm. What kind of place is Jordan? Are there not better rivers in Syria? Are there not better pools that he can dip himself in? Why must he go to the Jordan where there is a multitude of, of uh, of the Israelites, you know? Why must he mingle himself with those people? He wanted a private and confidential setting to go and dip himself in one of the pools of Siloam, one of the pools of Syria. He wanted one that had dignity and honor. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> and so he is offended because where he has been sent looks like it has no dignity and no honor. But where is Jordan? Where is Jordan? Is Jordan not the same place the faith was planted and Jesus was baptized and the heavens were opened and the dove came down and the Holy Spirit descended and the Father spoke? Is that not the same Jordan? Is Jordan not the same place where Elijah was taken? Where Elijah received the mantle? Where he got his double measure? In other words, Elijah is telling him, go where I fix my bread. Go there. Where there was my double measure. Find yours there. Give yourself one. Come on, say, Pastor Ted. Tafuta na laskuta. By the seventh time, now you will have found that double measure that can heal your lepros. Praise the name of Jesus. Elisha was sending him to the place of prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. And Naaman is offended because often, often, many times, the place of bread does not look dignified. The place of the bread where sons receive bread does not look like it is of any dignity. We can overlook it. We can be offended like Naaman. Okay. Finally, Naaman is convinced. He is told, you know, if you have been told to do a very difficult thing, you would have done it. Just go. Just try. Just see what happens. And because he is a desperate man, he goes to the, to the Jordan. Obeys the word of the servant of God. Ah! The scripture says when he came out, his skin was as fresh as that of a baby. Praise the name of Jesus. Mmm! He has found bread that has satisfied him, 
that has made his skin to be renewed like that of a youth. Praise the name of Jesus. Also has made him to be renewed like a child again. Man shall not live by prayer alone. Mm. Now, okay, he is happy, delighted. Okay, he says now, let me go take those gifts I prepared, give them to the man. Let me give him something. When he comes to give Elijah the gifts he had brought, Elijah tells him, hey, I don't need it. I have enough bread here for me. I don't need your gold. I don't need your silver. I don't need your, your clothes of silk and linen. I don't need your gifts. And now, man, go with them and thank the Lord. Huh. That was not Elijah. But Gehazi, we know Gehazi, don't we? Gehazi looked at those stones. He looked at those stones. The stones that Naaman had brought. You know when Naaman brought gifts, Elijah saw stones. Gehazi saw bread. Huh. Uh -huh. Naaman has, when Naaman is looking at the gold, and the huh. this is just stones of no one and no value to me. But Gehazi, with the greed of his heart, has looked and has seen this. This is bread. If I'm not careful, this is Elisha. Can you learn the economics? He doesn't understand the finance system. How can he reject the gift that Naaman has brought to us? He doesn't know we need this money to continue the ministry. He doesn't know we have pending bills. I'm here, I should be done with the imagine I still have to do it now. My with Elisha. The house he was handling everything. It's funny, those who handle the money never have a revelation of the money itself. Judas was one of them, always handling the money, but he never knew bread and the stones. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, Gehazi has seen bread. Now, Elisha has seen stones. Elisha has sent Naaman away to him, carry your stones with you and go. Because I shall not live by those stones. I live by the word of God. I live by the word that comes from the mouth of God. From the overflow. That's where I live from. Praise the name of Jesus. So Gehazi, Sits, he calls himself to a meeting and he decides this thing Elijah has done is wrong. It's very wrong. Okay, even if he doesn't want the gifts, he cannot give me. He cannot receive and give me. <laughs> what is wrong with giving me something? Don't I deserve it? Hmm. So Gehazi follows. I'm just paraphrasing the story. We know it. Gehazi follows after who? After Nama. And he tells him, hey! The king, please stop. Slow your chariots. The man of God has changed his mind. He has realized we need some of those things. Not everything, some of them. And the now man is willing to give him everything because he had come with them to, to give them anything. And says, ah, at least now I can go back and please knowing that my gifts have been received. Mm -hmm. So Naaman gives him the gift, and Gehazi goes back quietly. I made his sword. And what has he done? He has turned stones to bread. Huh. Gehazi has done what? He has turned stones. Are we here? Gehazi has done what? He has turned stones to bread. Thank you. <laughs> uh huh. Then uh, he comes and hides from Elijah. He said, When you turn stones to bread, you come and hide. You are not able to face your father again. You are not able to face him with confidence and boldness because you know somewhere, somehow, you have done something. You have turned some stones to you, they were bread, and you have come back with them to eat them. Now, the problem of the bread, of the stones you turn to bread, is you, you take everything, including the leprosy. Praise the name of Jesus. So Elijah tells him, Gehazi, where, where are you? Where are you from? <laughs> Gehazi says, just here, just there, you know. Kasi hapa, kasi pale. So now we're going to kasi na kwa na hapa, kani sani. Ni hapa na pale, kibogutu. 
Watu wasiyo na nilisa nimekuwa wapi? Wele mke. Siku na kazi hapa tunafanya. And then Elisha says, "Was my spirit not with you when the, when the, the ruler Naaman stepped down from his chariot and gave you the, the gift? I was there. I saw it happen. You are hiding nothing from me. I saw you turning stones to bread. And now they ask, hmm? they ask, you will receive the bread that you have taken plus the leprosy of the, of the man who was healed. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hmm. John chapter 4. Let's go there. I'm about to finish. John chapter 4. This story is about the Samaritan woman. Jesus is talking with a Samaritan woman. Hmm? And I'm just picking a few verses to, to, to teach us something. Uh -huh. From verse 6, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, he sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? Verse 8, that's where I was going. His disciples had gone. Does your Bible say the same thing? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food, to buy bread. <laughs> so they left Jesus. And then the Samaritan woman has come. Wameanza story, kidogo. Memuitisha maji. Isaiah 55, come and eat. Come and drink. Come and buy without money. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. For, for verse 8. His disciples had gone into the town to buy bread. Okay. Just remember that. Then... <laughs> The conversation with Jesus and the Samaritan woman continues. Uh -huh. She's wondering, why are you asking me? You are a Jew, I am a Samaritan. We don't talk to each other. Why are you asking me for water? <laughs> and Jesus is telling her, if you knew the one who is asking you for water, <laughs> you would give him. In fact, you would even ask him to give you living water so that you never thirst again. Hmm? You would ask him for sustenance for all your life. Praise the name of Jesus. If you knew who is talking to you, if you knew that the man standing before you is the bread himself, is the living waters himself, ah, you would know. And you would know how to ask him. And you would know what to ask of him. But because this woman is telling Jesus, this well, hmm, this well was given to us by our father Jacob. This is what we live by. Huh. We live by this well. In other words, she was telling Jesus, this stone is what gives us life. We live by this stone. This stone here is the one we have drunk from. This stone here is the one our children, our fathers and forefathers and great-great-grandfathers drank from and we are still drinking from this one. But to Jesus, this is a stone. To Jesus, this is not the living waters. To Jesus, this is not the bread of life. Jesus is saying, this is but a stone. You Samaritans have been trying to turn it into bread, to turn it into living waters, and it has not worked. And now the living waters has come to you and is asking you, is asking you, is asking you. Can I put a, something across to us? The one who is the bread of life, has come to you to ask you for bread. The one who is the living waters has come to me to ask me for water. Isn't that strange? Why is he asking for bread? Why is Elijah asking for bread? Elijah could have gone anywhere, at any place, at any time, and met any widow and told them, make me something to eat. But he chose this woman, who to her she had one stone left, they eat it and they die. You see, that's the problem with stones. Stones, even if they become bread, you will eat them once and they die. Praise the name of Jesus. Even if 
by some anointing, by some grace of God. The stone turns to bread. You will eat it and carry leprosy like Gehazi. Praise the name of Jesus. Even if there is no guarantee of these things that are stones. Stones are not bread. Praise the name of Jesus. We have failed as a church. Now I'm not talking about eternity, but the body of Christ has failed in this place. We have gone for stones. Huh? We have chased the stones. We have looked for the stones. We have gathered the stones because we were in the middle of a famine. We were in the middle of a wilderness. So why should we die when all these stones are here? Just pick any, any two, five stones, get them here. We're going to prophesy to them. Huh? Listen, the only things that were prophesied to and came to life are bones. Those were the bones that Elijah, uh, Ezekiel saw. And he was asked, son of man, what do you see? He said, I see bones, not stones. Bones can come to life. But stones, if they become bread, I will assure you, you will eat it and after you eat it, it will go back to becoming the stone it was. Praise the name of Jesus. So the body of Christ has gone looking for stones. We've come from the Jordan. We have stepped down from the place of, of, of obedience and sonship like Gehazi. We have gone after Naaman. We have gone after Naaman. <laughs> we have gone after them. And I told them, hey, those stones, please, we are needing, we need them. In fact, we have a conference. In fact, we have a few things to do. In fact, there's a few projects. In fact, we want to build a burning bush center in Konabaridi. In fact, there are things we need to do. Please, don't go with your stones. Give us something. Leave. Haven't you been ministered to? Haven't you been attached? Hasn't the grace of God come upon your life? Give us something. We are turning. The body of Christ and especially upon the Pentecostal church, we have begun turning. Let me, let me say it like this. Many ministries, if I was to give them a name, I can call them st Stone Turning to Bread Ministries International. <laughs> because you have to add international there. <laughs> eh? Stone to Turning to Bread Ministries International. That's what the body of Christ is doing. Hmm. Because the body of Christ has failed to recognize his place as a son. Huh? We are being measured. Our sonship is being measured mm -hmm, in the wilderness. And what do we end up doing? Turning stones to bread. There are things God never told you to do. You are doing them. What are you doing? Huh? Let me say it nicely. There are things God never told you to do, but you are doing them. There are things your father never told you to do, but you're doing them. What do we call that? You're turning stones to bread. I wish you luck. <laughs> I pray for you. <laughs> the disciples have gone to buy bread. Jesus is left talking to the Samaritan about water. Because all these things are the same. It's about sustenance. It's about provision. It's about abundance. Mm -hmm. It's about overflow. Then, Jesus chooses to introduce somebody here. In this conversation, he introduces someone. You know the veil was parted. The heavens opened. Now the things, Jesus is saying, the things I do are not my own things. I'm not operating by myself. The things I'm doing, hey, they are the things I see my father do. So in every conversation, the son must talk about the father. So now, they reach, they reach a verse. Which verse is this? Verse 22. I'll read and come back. Actually, verse, uh, verse 21. Hmm? Actually, verse 19. Sir, the woman said, this is after Jesus has told her that go call your husband. She has said, I have no husband. And Jesus told him, in fact, you're correct because you have had five and the one you're with is not yours anyway. So she realizes, I'm talking with someone who is not an ordinary man. And she says, I recognize you're a prophet. And she says, uh -huh. our fathers. Stop there. Verse, verse, what? verse 19. I can see you are a prophet. And then she's, the next thing she says, is, our fathers. Our fathers. Suddenly the, the conversation shifts. You know when you introduce fathers, you are talking about huh, fatherhood, sonship, overflow. Our fathers worshipped here. Mm. They drank of these waters. And it never satisfied them. 
Our fathers, this war has been a stone to them that has never satisfied our father's thirst. Even today, we are still thirsty. Our fathers have worshipped here, but we have never worshipped in the truth and in spirit. Our fathers have gathered here, but we have never known the heavenly father. Our fathers worshipped here. Mm. Mm -hmm. On this mountain. But you Jews claim that we must worship in Jerusalem. From the time of our fathers, every generation worships here. It's, it's trying to turn this thing, to turn it some, to make it something. We are turning it to make it something that can give life to our generations and our children. Our fathers have worshipped here. And you Jews, yours is Jerusalem. And then Jesus is answering her. Both of those ones are stones. They are not bread. They are not the living waters. In fact, a time is coming. Praise the name of Jesus. And the time has come when the Father shall seek for those who worship in the truth and in spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Verse 27. The same chapter. Then, just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? You know, the disciples were, they were Jews, so they knew. They knew this is a Samaritan. We don't talk to Samaritans, so they came and kept quiet. <laughs> then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back. Even her, she didn't talk to them. She picked her jar, <laughs> left. Actually, she left it. She left it and went. <laughs> the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the bread? Could this be the living waters we've been looking for? Come. Isaiah 55, come. Come and buy without money. Come and eat. Sonship comes and eats without. Could this be you know that question is a question of desperation. It's a question of longing. Our fathers have been trying to turn this stone to bread for so many years. But could this be the bread of life that has come to us? Praise the name of Jesus. Our fathers have been trying so much to turn this, these waters to be living waters. But is it possible that the man I have met who has told me everything about my life, could he be the living waters? Praise the name of Jesus. She's asking a question that has been in the heart of many generations. Could this be 2024? We're talking about the year of overflow. Could this be the bread we have waited for? Could this be the overflow and the living waters we have waited for huh. but we must stop doing one thing we must stop turning the stones we have and the stones around us to become bread because if we are turning the stones we are going to miss the bread who is standing before us saying if you knew who I am if you knew who is talking to you you would ask him for the living waters praise the name of Jesus could this be could this be 2024, could this be the year of our overflow? Could this be that the bread has come to us? Huh. We will miss it if we are turning this way at the direction of the tempter, turning stones to bread, busy prophesying to them. 
Let me tell you something. It's about time we left the stones. Leave the stones. Leave them. Leave the stones. The things God not didn't tell you to do, and you're so busy putting all your heart and mind there. Leave them. Those are stones. You're going to miss the overflow. This woman at the well was going to miss the living waters if she had been busy pulling the water out of the well, turning the stones to bread. Praise the name of Jesus. Some things are, we are doing like a Samaritan woman. The living water is standing here. Overflow is here. And we are busy turning, turning stones to bread, pulling, pulling from a well, working very hard. <laughs> Yet, overflow shall not come by bread alone. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm about to finish. <clears throat> We are still here with the Samaritan woman. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him. They had gone, remember verse 8, where had they gone? To bring bread, to bring food. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, please eat something. And he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. <laughs> they had gone to buy food because it was a need. That time everyone is hungry and they left Jesus there. And they have come with food. And like, Rabbi, so you eat. And he's telling them, oh, me, I have food. You, you don't know anything about it, but I have food. And then they start asking each other, mm -hmm. could someone, I'm a little, someone brought him something to eat while we were away. When we had gone to the shop, someone brought him something to eat. And Jesus said, my food, my food, my bread is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Praise the name of Jesus. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. You see, sonship, the food of sonship is to do the will of the one who sent the son and finish the work. That one is food to the son. When the son is told to bring food to the storehouse of God, he brings it because his food is to bring food to the house of God so that the work can be finished. Praise the name of Jesus. So now, <laughs> uh -huh. Jesus says, do you not say four more months and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and, and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. The food is ready. What is he saying? The will of God is here. The Father has so much for us to do. The Father has so much for us to do. Already look at the fields. They are already white. The instruction, the things God wants us to do this year are already white. Man, the harvest is plenty. But if we are busy turning stones to bread, hey. Hmm. John chapter 6. When they found him on the other side, verse 25, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Now, the previous part of this scripture is where Jesus fed the 5,000 with what? Fish and bread. So now they have come to look for him and they have found him. And Jesus is telling them, you know you've not come because you want me. You've come for, for bread. <laughs> you've not even come because of the miracles. You've come for, for bread. And then Jesus says to them, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Hmm? Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God has placed, on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the work God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. And then they asked, 
What miraculous sign will you give us so that we may see and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. I, these people always bring in their forefathers. They always must reference the forefathers. He, he, they are telling him, our forefathers had something. They had manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Mm. They are not recognizing that Jesus is, is the same thing Jesus was saying to the Samaritan woman. The thing your forefathers ate, those were stones. Now the bread has come. Praise the name of Jesus. The overflow has come. Leave the stones of your forefathers. Forget the manna they ate. Those are stones. <laughs> you know, the, for you to know, let, let me clarify. They ate manna. Yes, it came from heaven. Yes, the Lord sent them manna. But you know, the manna would get spoiled. If they picked excess, tomorrow it would rot. <laughs> True or false? And Jesus is telling them here, don't eat the things that spoil. What is he telling them? That was not bread. Leave alone that one, not manna. That was not bread. In fact, even them, they said, what is this manna? What is this? That one was not bread. <laughs> bread himself has come. Overflow himself has come. Leave the bread. Leave the stones. <laughs> Understand that overflow shall not come by bread alone, but by the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And Jesus answered to them and said, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father. You know, they talk about their forefathers and Jesus also talks about his father because the veil had been removed. When they mentioned their fathers, Jesus says, but my father has also provided because sonship and overflow, overflow is between here, sons and fathers. So whenever they mention theirs, Jesus says, ah, those are stones. Have you met my father? Do you know that my father is seeking those to worship him in truth and spirit? Have you met this, the bread my father gives that when you eat, you don't go hungry again? Isaiah 55 says, eat and be satisfied. Delight yourself in the richest of foods. Praise the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they talk about their father and Jesus talks about his father also. And he says, but my father, it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Praise the name of Jesus. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Praise the name of Jesus. The bread of God is him who has come down to give us life, to give us overflow in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Then they said, sir, they are talking like the Samaritan woman. <laughs> Give us this bread. <laughs> Give us this bread that we may eat. Finally, they got it. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So it goes back to Isaiah 55 where I began. Remember that scripture. Now, First Chronicles 4 verse 9 and 10. If you find it, please uh, stand up. We are just wrapping up. We will read this one as we are standing. I want us to read it together. as we are reading it I sense that the Lord still wants to do something with us this morning it's not going to wait for later it's going to be for now I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to me In Haggai, the Lord had an offense with the people because he said, you are busy building your houses 
And yet the house of God is in ruins. Amen? You are concerned about your houses and the house of God is not doing well. And the reason you can be concerned about your houses and not the house of God is because of what we talked last week. There is a veil between the fathers and the sons. They have not recognized that the house of God, the house of their father, if it is well, their houses will be well. Praise the name of Jesus. If there is food in the storehouse of your father, as a son, as a daughter, you can rest. You can rest and be at peace. Because there cannot be abundance in the house of your father and lack in your own house. Because your house and the house of your father is one. If you are a son and the veil has been removed, all things are common between fathers and sons. Is that not true? All things are common. That is why inheritance, who owns inheritance? Let me ask you. Who owns inheritance? Who owns it? Huh? You're still wrong. It's not the son. It's also not the father. <laughs> Where does it sit? Inheritance, who has it at first? Who has the inheritance first? Okay. I have a son. Who is holding the inheritance? The father. But who will have it in the end? The son. So whose was it? <laughs> whose was it? If the father had it, and the son will have it, and sometimes the son can have it when the father is there. The prodigal son asked for his inheritance when the father was there. So inheritance, overflow, it is, it is common. I'm, this is what I'm telling you. It is common. It is a common thing between fathers and sons. They share inheritance. One side the father holds it. <laughs> I mean, we have lawyers here and other people, we understand law, you can transfer to the son. If the father transfers to the son, has the father lost anything? And if the son gives it to the father, has he lost anything? It is common between fathers and sons. So when the Lord has, speaks and says, bring to the storehouse, bring to the house of God. Unless we have not recognized that this is our house. Let me say that again. This is your house also. It's the house of your father and it's your house also. There is a common thing we share here called overflow and inheritance. It's here. Praise the name of Jesus. So now, with that understanding, I want you to ask the Lord to forgive you. Where you have distinguished the house of your father and your house. Where you have talked like the Samaritan woman. You know our fathers, them they used to drink from this well. It has never satisfied them, but our fathers used to drink from this well. And maybe we also must keep drinking from this well. Maybe you are like the, the, the Jews, the, speaking to Jesus, saying, our forefathers, those ones, ate manna in the wilderness. Everyone is bringing what their fathers gave them. Yet Jesus is standing here saying, but my father, don't tell me about your fathers. Don't tell me the well that they drank from. Don't tell me the bread that they ate. I've come as the living bread, the living waters. And I've come here for the sake of your overflow. Stop telling Jesus many stories when he has come to tell you his story about his father and his house which is full. Even at the end, Jesus says, John 14, he's saying, I'm going to the father. <laughs> He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm in my father's house. Oof. That's the scripture I want us to pray with, actually. In my father's house are many rooms. In my father's house are many what? Rooms. In this father's house, there are many rooms. So why have you made your own habitation out there? 
Yet Jesus is saying, in the house of his father, there is many. In fact, I like one translation says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Not small rooms. See, bed, sit, kadogo, amaka space, kadogo. He's saying mansions. There is room for you in your father's house. But because you have not recognized it is your father's house, you bring nothing to your father's house. You bring nothing. You bring nothing to your father's house because you don't know it is your house. You don't know you have a room there. Amen. I want us to do these two things. We are going to ask the Lord to forgive us for that. And the next thing, I'm going to pray. First Chronicles 4 verse 9 and 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. What is that saying? He had brothers. But among all the sons, Jabez was more honorable. Among all the sons, Jabez was more honorable. If I be a father, where is my honor? Hmm? If I be a master, where is my honor? The Lord complains in Malachi, he says, you don't take the sick animals and give them as gifts to your governors and your lords. But you take the wounded and the maimed and the sick and the, and the, the, the broken and you bring them to the house of your father. If I be a father, where is my honor? I hear the Lord asking us like that today as we get to the conference. Because let me tell you, verse 10 cannot happen until sons become honorable sons in the house of God in the house of their father where they have a mansion for themselves praise the name of Jesus Jabez was more honorable I believe Jabez brought to the house of the father we don't know much about Jabez we don't know much of his story but I believe Jabez was that son that knew that is my father's house I have a room there not just a room I have a mansion and not one mansion I have two mansions maybe three maybe five I have abundance of room in my father's house so what does Jabez pray and Jabez call on the God of Israel saying oh that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and thou would, that thou would keep me from evil that it may not grieve me and God granted him that very thing that he asked for Jabez was not busy the verse there I have skipped it let me go back there it says Jabez more honorable than his brethren and his mother called him Jabez because she bore him in sorrow she bore Jabez in pain she bore Jabez in afflictions of life she bore Jabez in the wilderness Jabez was born in the dry place Jabez grew up surrounded by stones he could have easily decided to take one of the stones and turn it to bread but man shall not live by bread alone it doesn't matter even if the background is affliction even if the background is pain and sorrow overflow shall not come by bread alone it doesn't matter if it is from the place of emptiness the widow had less than you she had one meal for her and her son and they die hmm. she had one meal not and then they finish the food they buy tomorrow or they call someone to send them food they had one meal and they die 
afflictions and the lack are not an excuse praise the name of Jesus we have a chance eternity to be the honorable son like Jabez if we become the honorable son I think this is what he was praying he was praying the theme of our year I hear him say and Jabez called the God of Israel saying oh that thou would bless me indeed oh that thou would fill my cup oh that thou would make my cup run over oh that thou would give me overflow praise the name of Jesus and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me he was asking for overflow but he was asking it as an honorable son so this morning I'm going to give Bishop an opportunity to come and I want you to prepare something to bring to your house of your father I don't know that you'll give it now whether you'll give it later I don't know whether you'll give it in a kind, small, small, big I don't know, you the one who knows but if you can recognize this is my house also I have room here Jabez is saying enlarge your income for me where? in the house of the father Jabez is saying if that other son has not taken his room see you give me there also so you enlarge for me my tents praise the name of Jesus so let us read that scripture together all of us verse 10, 4 verse 10 and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying oh that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou would keep me from evil and it may not grieve me and God granted him that which he requested Give me oil in my heart, keep me burning. Give me oil in my heart, I pray. Give me oil in my heart, keep me burning. Keep me burning. is that many sons and daughters are vag vagabonds. Vagabonds are children without fathers and without a home. They are street children. Street children are children who don't belong to a home, who don't have an inheritance. And this morning, as you sit here, it's very important to identify where do you belong? Where do you belong? Is this the house of your father? Is this the house of your father? Have you made a decision that this is the, where you will get your blessing from? The Bible says in the book of Malachi, bring tithe in my house, that there may be food in my house, and then there will be food in your house. Where do you belong? Many of young people will think they are very clever. You know, clever. You know, clever is where 
you want just to be nowhere. If you choose to be nowhere, then you have no inheritance. But if this is your house, the house of your father, you can claim inheritance like the prodigal son was able to claim his inheritance in his house. You can say, Lord, I have served in this house. I have offered in this house. I deserve my inheritance in this house. Praise God. And that is why it is very important as a young person to identify where you belong. And if you don't think that you belong here, it's very important to go and look for your father and for your house and you belong there. Because you will waste a lot of time. Praise God. Inheritance is not given to strangers. Inheritance is given to sons. Praise God. Are we together here? And as we pray this prayer, I want you to make a covenant with the house of God. Say, so this is the house of God. This is the place I will be married. This is the place I will be blessed from. The servant of God in this house is my spiritual authority. These are my spiritual parents. Hallelujah. It is important for you. But if you choose, you can still choose to be a street child. And today we are very many children in the church who have never belonged. Who have never belonged. Hallelujah. Amen. Many, many years I know some of you have tried to run away. But when you came back to your house, hallelujah, you got your inheritance. Hallelujah. Many, many years, this sister Christine here, we led her to the Lord many years ago. And at that time, she was not with us. But when she came back home, she got her own home. Because your inheritance is in your house. Are you understanding me? I think Paul has put it very clear, maybe born brand than me. But you must belong somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Even women who move from house to house, we call them a bad name. What do we call them? Women who keep moving from that man to another man to another man. We call them what? Are they having a good name? So are you also one of them? Do you think you are one of them who keep moving from house to house and you don't belong anywhere? Hallelujah. Are you a vagabond? Vagabond are children without what? Huh? Oh, is they bastard? Children without? fathers. Isn't it? Do you have a father, spiritual father? Do you have a home? Do you have a spiritual home? Do you belong anywhere? These are the bigger questions that you need to ask yourself. That's why many people can be offended and they run away from the church because they never even belong there in the first place. Hallelujah. I have Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. So, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come and make a commitment to belong. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you an opportunity to walk before.
before God, I'm not going to pray for you. But you are going to make a choice that I belong in this house. Let me tell you, when you belong to our home, it doesn't matter how your mother and your father are. Is it? Does it matter? Does it matter whether your father is a drunkard? Does it change that you don't belong to that home? Hallelujah. Even when your father marries two wives, he still don't belong to that home. Is it true? So I hear very many people saying, oh, my pastor is behaving like this. The pastor's wife did not do me this. So I'm going away. You did not even belong in the first place. Because if you belonged, it doesn't matter what happens. Hallelujah. Is it true? Are your parents perfect? But you have you changed home because your parents are not perfect? Have you changed home because your brother looked at with you with bad eyes? Do you change home? Hallelujah. So I want to allow you sometime it's good to make a commitment to the Lord. And say, Lord, this will be my house. The house of my blessing. The house of the Lord. This is a place I will get my car from here. I will get my husband from here. I will get my wife. I will get my future. I will ascend from here. I have made a choice to belong. Nobody can be forced to belong, but you can make a decision. So as we make that prayer before the Lord, come before the Lord, make a commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I giving you a good opportunity? As we sing that song, just walk before the Lord. The Lord, I choose this place. I choose this is the house that I belong. This is the family I belong. I belong. I know many, many people who are Roman Catholic. And they are there. That is their home, isn't it? They chose. I know others who are PCA. They have chosen to belong there. I have decided to follow Jesus, I am desired. Just make a step. To follow Jesus, I'm waiting for you here. Just decided to follow Jesus. No. I'm just waiting for you. Just take a step. It is a very serious day today. Don't wait for anybody else. Just come yourself and make a choice for God. To belong to our home. To belong to our family of God. And it is a choice. Hallelujah. God bless those who are coming. But you can come. You can come. You have never made a covenant. You have never made a decision. Even maybe you have been here, you think you belong, but you have never made a covenant before God. Just walk forward in Jesus' name. It's a very serious moment of time. Don't assume you belong. Come and belong. Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume you belong. Make a prayer before God. I see many people still behind there. Do you belong to this church? Are you a stranger? Do you belong to this church? Are you a stranger? No. Is this place your home? Is this the place you want to belong? I'm still waiting. I still many people still standing behind there. It is very serious moment of time. You can come. You can still come. You can come. This is your home. This is your spiritual home. Yes.
yes you have a physical home but you choose this to be a spiritual home you can come you can come and belong you can come of worship I dedicate myself that this house shall be my home my spiritual home it is in this place that I will draw my blessing it is in this house that I will serve you that I will receive correction that I will receive teaching I choose to be faithful I choose to honor and to walk in honor in this house I choose the spiritual parenthood here I accept to be a son in this house I choose to be a daughter in this house Lord I do not want to be a street child one without a home a spiritual home but today I choose this as a, my spiritual home where I will receive your grace and therefore Lord I thank you I accept my parents in this house I accept my brothers and sisters in this house I have come I am not just here on a journey but I am here to stay and to receive my inheritance from this house it is in this house where I will receive the, the training the equipping I will be equipped in this house I will draw my blessing spiritual blessing I am not a stranger anymore here but I'm a child of this house I belong I accept to belong and I thank you give me the patience and the grace to be a child and a son and a daughter in this house it is in this place that you shall drop my blessings my future blessings shall come from this place this is my place my destiny and I thank you for leading me in this place this is my home my spiritual home in Jesus name Amen God bless you you can stand 
God bless you. Let us appreciate them. It is important to belong. It is important to belong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is very important to belong. When you belong, you receive. Kuna baraka yako hapo. Kuna neema yako hapo. Hallelujah. And I thank God for those who have made that choice. We have many people today who just come around and they go around and they don't get their blessings. But there's grace in a in, in a blessing in a being a child in a home the blessing so please from today you are not a stranger just you have a claim in this house and you have a right to come even to bishop and say I have a claim in this house I have a right for my blessing in this house Hallelujah. Amen. It is so important. I always tell people that God wants us to have to belong to a fellowship. Hallelujah. To belong. If you are even if you live here and you go to another country, you know you have a home, a spiritual home. Hallelujah. You have covering from that home. There are people who stand with you in that home. And there are many times I pray to God. There are many times I intercede for those who have made a choice to be part of this. And I always tell God, may they have an inheritance. Because they have chosen to belong. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We are so blessed. We have uh, going to we are going to go straight to our celebration service. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Because our time is up. Is it up? Yes. So we'll be going straight to our celebration service. Today we have got preachers from Ethiopia. They are the ones preaching. Amen. We took out our ubiri kutoka Ethiopia. They are going to preach, they are going to pray, they are going to minister. Uh, today we are going to eat injala uh, message. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. How many people love Ethiopian people? How many people love Ethiopians? Amen. The Ethiopians are in the house. And this week after they preach, on Tuesday they will be going to Taita. The pastor there is waiting for you. I talked to him, to her, Reverend Marcelina. She's waiting for you there. In Jesus' name. And then we are trusting the Lord to begin. Hey. We to begin an Ethiopian church in Isili. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. By the grace of God. Before work goes, we are going to start something in, in Isli. Hallelujah. Because we have very many Ethiopians and they need also to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I want to welcome the Hallelujah. The children, we are all blessed. We are going to go to the to this to the main celebration service together by the grace of God. Yes, Paul has been away for some time, so I think he's unloading most of the things he has been having there in Australia, so and very soon he'll be doing a wedding and then fly back, so allow him to we allowed him to continue releasing what is in his heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. And it is a blessing. As he spoke this morning about stones and the bread, I think very many people are eating stones. 
Hallelujah. They are turning stones. Hallelujah. Mm. Sinikweli. Hallelujah. Many of the people are turning stones into to bread. And I saw many people like that. Those who are looking at the things of this world and thinking those things of this world can become anything. Amen. You, there are many people looking for things and they will have those things and they will have no joy. You love those things. Yes, you love the stones. Hallelujah. But inside the stones, and I was seeing very many people today who have got stones like cathedrals. But inside those stones, there's what? There's death. Hallelujah. And the one who was a life giver is not even inside the stones. Hallelujah. May we seek him, the life giver, the bread giver. May he be that we may not pursue the rocks and the stones because they have no life. <laughs>